Here we have the six best phones on the planet from six different brands and I wanna test the selfie cameras in photo, in video, in lots of different situations and see which one provides the best results. The Galaxy S20 Ultra has a 40 megapixel image sensor. The Redmi K30 Pro has a pop-up camera and is one of the cheapest ways to buy the flagship Snapdragon processor. The Huawei P40 Pro, known by a lot of people as the gold standard for Chinese smartphones and certainly the gold standard for photography from Chinese smartphones. The Mi 10 Pro is the new contender trying to take Huawei's crown. A design matched by the OnePlus 8 Pro, which is a very popular phone. And how can we forget the iPhone? Of course, it has to be there, the world's most popular phone. What stands out for me here is that the phone on the right is really bright. There are absolutely no shadows in the image whatsoever. That's in really stark contrast to the phone on the left, which keeps some shadows and to my eye looks more natural. Interesting, the iPhone is on the left and for me looks more natural. That's what my eye goes towards. Let's switch out the Xiaomi Mi 10 Pro and put in the OnePlus 8 Pro. I can definitely see a big difference. I feel like the exposure is a little bit more natural overall and it's much closer to the iPhone and the Samsung. Let me know what you think in the comments though. The biggest thing I notice is that the iPhone tries to shoot a natural looking image. The shadows in the image are shadows because they naturally are there. Whereas I would say the OnePlus 8 Pro, the Xiaomi Mi 10 Pro and the Redmi K30 Pro just do not want shadows in the image and brighten everything at the same point. Moving on to a standard selfie, no portrait modes here. Again, I see that the phone on the right is allowing no shadows whatsoever. It just wants everything to be bright. And the phone on the left is allowing a lot of shadows, again, more natural. The phone in the middle is somewhere in between. So there, as we can see, the Xiaomi Mi 10 on the right, it's actually the P40 Pro in the middle and the iPhone on the left. The Samsung S20 Ultra seems to change the shape of my face, actually, compared to the other phones. My face isn't that shape. I think it's making my eyes bigger than they actually are. The Xiaomi really stands out for being a very bright image, especially in my face, and it's definitely smoothening out my skin and beautifying my skin. None of them look bad or terrible. They just have a different style. Whichever style you prefer, that's the one you go for, but I don't think any of the phones have taken a bad picture here. This is another selfie with a really harsh lighting condition. My face was away from the light source and it was backlit. For me, the S20 Ultra keeps the most vibrant color in the background in the building for sure. Because the Xiaomi device always tends to push up shadows and allow no shadows, when you have a backlit scene, it becomes way, way too much. The S20 Ultra does a much better job of exposing the background and the foreground differently. As I said, it's using some really special HDR to get those different exposures. It looks like the P40 Pro did a pretty good job overall as well with the exposure. Definitely lighter than what you get on the iPhone. It's amazing to see the difference from the OnePlus 8 Pro 2. Again, a good exposure all around, just favoring lighter tones when it comes to my face and the shadows on my face. So how's the stabilization for video on all of the phones? I'm gonna to get to audio and video quality in a second, but I really don't think the iPhone has any trouble with stabilization, it's looking very natural. The S20 Ultra, certainly, it just brightens up the whole scene and brightens up my skin tones way more than the iPhone, but good stabilization. The P40 Pro definitely has good stabilization too. It looks a little bit jittery compared to the S20 Ultras though. And how about the OnePlus 8 Pro? How does that do? The exposure is so different. The background is overblown because it wants to overexpose my face because overexposing images is more forgiving when it comes to taking images of people's faces. You wanna bring up those shadows. The Mi 10 Pro has, from what I can see, absolutely no stabilization whatsoever in its front camera. This is a really big downside for the phone. The K30 Pro being even cheaper than the Mi 10 Pro and from Xiaomi 2, not expected to have stabilization either. It's definitely disappointing in those two phones that they just don't even attempt to stabilize the image in any way from the selfie camera. When we compare the OnePlus 8 Pro to the Mi 10 Pro, there really is a night and day difference between the stabilization the two big boy brands, I think they're doing a very good job. Definitely a different style in the way that the image is exposed, but in terms of stabilization, nothing to worry about on those two phones. 
and you can just see the big difference between one of the most expensive phones in the world and the budget flagship phone, the Redmi K30 Pro with no image stabilization. The P40 Pro much more like those top end brand flagships like the iPhone. They're pretty even here, even though the P40 Pro looks a little bit stuttery. Just some differences in using all of these phones at exactly the same time. You notice some differences in what the camera apps give you. So the Samsung and the iPhone actually give you an extra option when taking selfie photos. You can go a little bit wider on the angle, which means you can get more people in the shot. It is useful when you're taking a selfie or taking a photo like that to get a wider angle and a wider focal length. That only works in photo on those two phones though, but I still think the video when you do record it is at a wider angle, especially on the iPhone as compared to the Huawei and the OnePlus. They seem to have quite narrow field of view for their selfie cameras, which isn't the best when you're looking for a selfie camera because you do want quite a wide angle to get more in the shot. See how everything appears a little bit more zoomed in on the OnePlus 8 Pro so you don't get as much of the background. Also, it's pretty hard to get my face in because it is a little bit more zoomed in. So you have to put it right out here to get a wider angle. There are two other big deals though. The first is audio recording, which is important for a selfie camera because you'll probably be talking to it. And also stabilization which on the Xiaomi and the Redmi, I don't think matches up to the other phones. On the Redmi, because it's a cheaper phone, I kind of get it. You have to leave out some things. But the Xiaomi device is a thousand bucks, which is more expensive than the iPhone 11. And you expect some stabilization on the selfie camera on a phone that expensive. Both the P40 Pro and the S20 Ultra can record 4K off their selfie cameras. Not really a massive deal for me, but it's always nice to have more features. Talking about features, how do the portrait modes go on the phones? So these are the three most expensive phones of the bunch and actually I think they all do a pretty good job of separating that background and making it blurrier than it would have been naturally. Switching out the two on the right and I noticed that the background on the Xiaomi Mi 10 Pro is really, really blurry, definitely more blurry than the other two. I wonder though if the bigger notch that Huawei are using does actually make for a better selfie camera and better portrait shots. I think I can just see that it is slightly more natural on the P40 Pro, but if we compare that phone to the iPhone, you can just see the difference in my face. So this is really how much the Huawei is smoothening my skin, blurring my skin and trying to beautify my skin as opposed to the iPhone, which tries to keep things more natural. Seeing the S20 this close up as well, you can see that the S20 definitely smooths and softens my skin too. So there's definitely some beauty modes there. And this is the OnePlus 8 Pro and I think it's done a really good job as well of separating me from the background. Fairly natural looking skin tones and facial features overall. This is all of them side by side so you can make a decision on which one you like the best. And again, let me know in the comments, which one do you think did it best? Subscribe for the latest tech news and videos. That's it for now, but I'll see you in the next one.